Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Radwan. I'm a Visual Studio MVP, DevOps and Cloud Architect. So we are going to continue on our series for Dynamics 365 and self-provision environment. But in this video, we are going to use VSTS build automation to complete a fully automated uh, self-provision Dynamics 365. So we will go through all the process that we did in the previous video for running a manual PowerShell script or partial automation and then but we will engage and integrate all this script inside the VSTS build which run all this process so let's see that so I will start first by open my Azure subscription where I will connect my Azure subscription to my VSTS account and here open my VSTS account where I have my build definition where I configured it with all the script needed so if we go for edit okay we can see here I have all the script so let's go for variables and here in the variable I, I, I set some of the important variable like for example what is the machine name and I put it as setable at queue time. So when I, I queue the build, it will ask me what is the machine name you want to name your, your Dynamics 365 machine. So I, I, I must put that. So this is the first variable. The second one is the source, the CRM backup source. So I can pick up back up the pick up the source. The the next one is the test organization, and the one is here I put which source I want to pick up my my backup here's the name of the organization that I want to import after creating the new machine and here is a target machine to export the solutions for example I have another deployment or organization that I want to ex export the solution from so here I will put that and here is the the organization to be exported from so here is the target to export from and the previous one is to export to and here of course I put the password to be hidden and of course encrypted and I put here the username for for the domain so I can have privilege to look to join the domain and have and here's the service account for the CRM service account and here is the password for the service account this is needed for fixing the application pool for Dynamics 365 so all these settings it, it has a default value inside the script so if I if I send a new value it will override what existing in the script so as we can see if I go for this script for example this is the script where it will create the virtual machine from the image which is stored on the, the storage account on Azure and the main idea that all this script is on the source control on Git for VSTS this is the, the task and the script for join the domain and as we can see it's point here for script path to point to the, the, the source on the Git repository on this project and of course this is join the domain and in my case I needed to change as I explained before I needed to change the DNS and join the machine here configuring the new CRM which is most of the script like changing the the, the registry val values it started changing the SQL CRM configuration database with a new machine I start uh, changing the SQL uh, machine name to, to reflect the new machine name and instead of the old machine name so all this configuration run with within this task which is point to this script on the source control that we run this script in the previous video manually
And this one is the Git latest CRM organization database from backup location. So as we explain in the variable, if I set the location, then it will look at this location and override the hard-coded location. Uh, so it will take the backup and here restore the organization to uh, to the new machine. So after here, pick up the, the, the backup, copy that to the new machine, and this task will restore the backup to the database. After the restoring, I will import the organization to the new machine because the database now is uh, restored in the SQL. Now I just need to import the organization. Then I will export all the CRM solutions from the target CRM machines, again, based on the variables that I set inside the variables. And again, this will override the, the hard-coded variables. And after that, I will import all CRM solution which is exported in the previous task to the target machine which is usually is the current or the new machine that I'm creating in that part. So this is the, the, the same tasks and I just create partial task mapping to each file. So let's go for the build and start queuing a new build and see the process. So if I go here and queue a new build. So as we can see here, will ask me what is the name of the machine that you want to create. So I will name the machine demo CRM. And then queue the machine. So let's look at the build execution and see the console on the BSTS. So here it's waiting for the agent to acquire the agent to execute the build. We can see it's still waiting. This is usually happen. Now it's it got the agent and starts the execution as we can see. So as we can see here is create the new CRM machine on Azure and here is the name of the machine demo CRM. So this is a step that it just take an and create the, M, uh, the the virtual machine from the image stored on. It takes time. I will pause and return pack. So, and after return pack, as we can see here, this is the machine created and with this is the IP address. I will take this IP to connect later. So here is joining the domain. So, and restarting the computer. So, now the machine joins the domain and we are restarting the computer. So, as we can see that the computer is restarted, so I will lose the connection. And all the, the time I'm, 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 I'm looping now to test the connectivity between the VSTS and the, the, the virtual machine on the Azure to make sure it's available. Once it's available, I will start to continue the the execution so here it's continue of course I post to, to quick that that so as we can see it's updates the registry start also running the SQL script to update the CRM configuration database uh, so here run the SQL script this is for the SQL server, not for the CRM configuration. The previous was CRM configuration. And here to map the SSRS with the new machine. This take a little bit more time. Exactly as in the previous video. And now restoring the SSRS encryption key. So, because again, this is a new machine with a new hard disk. Fix the application pool with the credentials that I sent in the variables. And again, if I didn't send that, it will use the default values. Change the CRM web address settings and enable network share on the new machine. Then share SQL backup folder so I can copy the backup to the new machine so I'm sharing folder now of course after sharing the backup folder I will start the machine so it can take the effects of 
all this configuration change like the registry the the crm configuration the sql server name it changed the instance name it changed so all of this information required restart for the machine and again i will keep looping on the machine connectivity so i can understand or i can know when it will be available so i can continue the script so as we can see now it's continue and then start backup uh, copy the backup and as we can see because i didn't specify the backup source then it's copy the backup from the hard coded or from the default value so still copy the backup from the destination to the existing machine the source then restoring the database to the current sql server which is the same new machine After that, importing organization. After restoring the database, importing the organization to the current deployment of the CRM. And because I put the organization name, so this is the target organization name to be imported. Also here, export the CRM solution from the target. And again, because I didn't put uh, a variable, then it's export from demo CRM organization. So it's exporting them from demo CRM. I think I put demo, I'm sorry. And then now this is new solution file found because this is exported solution. So it's going to delete the old solution if, if there exist. And import the, the new solutions, which is just exported right now so now it's importing and then the the complete process it's fine completed with importing the solution so if I open to my machine on uh, let's go for Azure portal and go for the virtual machine so I can see I have the demo CRM machine now is running and if I open the remote I, I copy the, the the IP during the the creation so so if I connect if you remember when during the execution of the build I copy the build the build IP and I'm connecting now with my domain account because this machine is joins the domain has the CRM D365 completed working fine with imported solutions and organization everything working fine let's see that so if I open the deployment manager going for organization and going for test organization browse so here I will find my test organization which is imported from the backup is working correctly and the solution I have also imported the solution so I completely create a new machine and import a new organization from backup and imported solution to this organization and all this process completed on the, the fly so let's use how to tear down that so again you know we this could be even part of the deployment pipeline with after acceptance test passed and so on but i will just show here an example so if i came here and start running the execution and the same it will ask me which machine you want to tear down or deprovision so i will put demo crm so this will run the execution of the build and it will deprovision or delete the machine of course you can go for azure portal and delete the machine but actually when you delete the machine from azure portal portal it doesn't delete all the associated resources like for example the phd the network uh, the nic the the security group the all this kind of associated uh, azure resources it doesn't you know 
delete it when when you delete the machine from Azure portal but using BSCs here I have a script which is control exactly what need to be deleted and as I explained before this will be part of the pipeline like I will not go and delete when I need to delete no it's like for example if I'm run automated test then the machine will be automatically deleted if the all the tests are passed because I don't need it. so I just create it to run the test and once it's so if this is a machine, if I refresh now, we, we will find that we will find that it is not existing anymore. So my build automation completely clean or deprovision this environment. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching the video. Please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me on my blog mohammedradwan.com. Also, you, you can visit my blog with the link that will appear at the end of the video or uh, click on the related video, which usually is part of this series um, or uh, give you more information about the same topic. Thank you.